Hello, everybody. My name is Alois. I'm working for Ruxit. We are a monitoring company. And what we do, we use AI technologies and much more specifically knowledge-based technologies to help operations people do their tasks better by supporting them with proper information, by pre-analyzing uh, this information for them. And uh, yeah, usually uh, when you talk to people and you ask to tell them you're doing something with AI, whatever it is, they ask you, especially if they come from a computer science background, so yeah, um, do you build software that's passing the Turing test? And that's how I came up with this talk. And I know everybody of you here knows what the Turing test actually is, so I don't have to tell you. But this is a quote from Wikipedia and just highlighted some pieces in there that really made me think, um, okay, how we can use it to make monitoring tools actually better or what we can take away from this. And um, what kind of struck me was, okay, building a system that exposes intelligent behavior that's kind of indistinguishable from a human. That's one aspect. So we expect the system to have some behavior that we would also expect from a human in some way. We can argue what intelligent means here, but that's one aspect. The other very interesting aspect here is having natural language conversations and human-like responses. Uh, honestly, if you look at monitoring tools, we're not really there. This is a screenshot of Ruxit, and we invested a lot of time in making monitoring tools context sensitive. So this actually means the information adjusts whether you have a problem or not. It's going to hide data that's not relevant for a problem while exposing uh, other data that is actually relevant for, for a problem. So we invested uh, quite some time into this. But to be entirely fair here, this does not yet feel like a human interaction. So the way we interact with monitoring tools is different than we interact with humans. We don't stand in front of people and watch them and just see them holding up like plates and tell us what's going on. Um, there is a concept that's becoming way more popular, which is chat ops. So using chat tools to interact with others, like using Slack, HipChat, and others. And chat tools these days also have integrations with our build tools, um, with a couple of other tools as well. But mostly, this is issuing a command or getting some type of feedback. It, it really is that you're really starting off a conversation with them. But there, we have this concept of conversation-driven uh, operations. So the idea was, what if we just try to make it a bit more than like a simple command? So what would it take to make these tools um, interact with us in a more human-like way? not just to make them cooler, but keep in mind, usually we use monitoring tools when we are in stress, and the more natural the interaction is that we are taking, the easier it is for us. It's not just, I'm your screen here, click, where, click on the chart that you're actually interested in, but also being proactive, like, hey, I found something in the system that you're interested in, do you want more information about it? It's being knowledge-based, knowing that presenting a slight CPU spike is something different than telling me that half of my users currently can't use my website and directing me in the right direction. Probably bringing the right people on board because it knows or it has some knowledge-based information about uh, who's responsible for this. And last but not least, simple guided interactions. Think, hey, okay, I found this application problem in RAM. Do you want to run me to run a synthetic test on it? Yes, please do. Uh, so don't wait for the human who is most likely under stress here to, to actually go there and do it. So that's something we can do. And uh, uh, to be fair, in a lot of other domains, we start to use this kind of tools, whether uh, we use something like Siri to have simple interactions. So the idea was, why don't put it into monitoring? And this uh, led me to actually build a, a small prototype that's supposed to do exactly this. So this is kind of work in progress. That's live connecting to one of our production clusters via the internet here. So bear with me, it's going to work here. If, if not, uh, yeah. <laughs> I know you guys know that stuff sometimes does not work. So the idea is I'm just asking Ruxit how it's doing, just that with a human, and now there's the big suspense. Is anything coming back here? Yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it told me, like, I found an application problem affecting uh, users of two applications, and what I'm simply doing is, okay, um, give me more, sorry, give me more details. And what it does, it says, okay, this is what I know so far, it's problem whatever, it started 
somewhere during the night, I could already identify a potential root cause. So it tells me not just know the problem, but I also have a potential solution for it. But if you want it, you can jump right into a monitoring tool. But right now, I don't want to go there because uh, so, so what is the actual impact? And it would, in this case, give me, OK, this is the impact. There's like two applications impacted by it so far. And giving me some information that can still be a bit improved here, but it's kind of driving it. And it also allows me to really have a conversation and coming back to, uh, like, OK, you said you, sorry, you have some root cause information. Yeah, so I found one potential cause. There's a CPU saturation in one machine. And now what it's doing is proposing me the next steps. Do you want to get more details on this? Saying, yes, sure, I do. And in this case, it's showing me a direct link to that very specific um, dashboard that's having this information. So this is still very early stage. It's more or less a prototype to kind of convey this idea that there are other ways to interact with monitoring tools than just looking at dashboards and so forth. And if we could switch back, yeah. Uh, so coming back here, so do I really think that monitoring tools need to pass the Turing test and that they need to do our jobs? No, I don't think so. But I want to add with a quote from our, a Marvel movie. I don't think, don't think that we need a human-like intelligence here, but it would be just good to have just a rather very intelligent system helping us solve operational problems. I know you most likely know which movie this comes from. And last but not least, this is a very early prototype and actually could use all of your help in there. Like if you're willing to share typical chat logs you guys have in production, it could really help us make the system better by knowing like the typical question, typical types of interaction which you want to build in there. Uh, we are also most likely going to open source this in, yeah, probably a month or so. We just have to switch it to a new, new API because by building it, we realized we needed a new one. So you have my contact details here. I'm really looking forward to getting your feedback. And if you have really any information on how you interact with those tools, uh, it'd be more interesting to uh, learn from what you, you guys are doing. Thank you.